Basically, what we were demonstrating is what this looks like from a student view. And the key points that we just talked about is that the basic structure of a Brightspace course is somewhat linear, where students will start at the top and move forward through it. And what we were just illustrating is that they can move through by just clicking this. It's both at the top and the bottom of each screen. So they can work through it um, at their own pace. They could jump to any module, any portion of it, but a typical way of doing it is going through it in a linear fashion. So when you devise your course modules, you should probably think of it as what they need to do first, next, and so forth. And um, in this, the way this particular example is logged out, students get an overview at the top, then they get an assignment from McGraw-Hill, which is an adaptive learning platform, the smart book platform, some basic text notes I put together. Um, and then there's two discussions they work with. And then they go through and there's some optional video resources, some optional web resources. And then there's a checklist which lists all the activities that they can do and they can check them off. It doesn't do that automatically. And Maggie, you were talking about the percent view when we went up to the main screen. Uh, and let's try it this time with the microphone working. So when we go to the course home, yeah, so, so when when students are first uh, logging into Brightspace, this is their view. And um, you can see the progress bar um, at the bottom of each of the squares of, and those represent each module, right? So as uh, students make progress throughout um, each module, it shows a percentage of what they've completed. And, you know, um, important to note that it's not necessarily indicative of the assignment or the work that they have completed, but um, how many of the pages that you've created uh, they have viewed. So um, it, it does give them kind of a good, you know, place to, you know, figure out where they need to jump back into if, you know, they complete some of the module, um, you know, one day or, you know, at some particular time and want to get back in and see uh, what's remaining for them to go over. So now this is what we want to focus on is how to build this content. And the place where you should start, and I'm hoping everyone has this open. I did say that a few times earlier before we get got started, Though, but without a microphone, right, that not probably us, was so. not very helpful. So, so if you if you go ahead, um, we did drop in the chat a link to accessing Brightspace. So if you haven't done that, um, please do. Um, you'll go through. You know, it'll ask for your sign in information, and it should bring you directly uh, to your course. Um, um, or to, to your homepage. And thank you, Casey. <laughs> yes, reposting. thanks for adding that back in. And so then you can pick um, any of the particular courses. There should be a running banner that shows you if you're viewing all of your courses or for a particular semester. Um, you know, so, um, uh, you know, select which course you want to work in. Um, if you, you know, don't um, want to work in a course that's currently live, then um, you know, there's, um, you know, hopefully, you know, your fall courses are um, all in there. So the place where you should start in general is course tools. And then, oh, I'm still in student view. Uh, <laughs> let me get out of student view. And you do that by clicking on the X. And we do this sometimes when we're tired. Uh, <laughs> it's been a busy week. Um, so let's try that again. Course tools and then course okay. admin. That's where you'll probably spend most of your time or a good chunk of your time, or at least a starting point. So we're gonna to go to course admin and that will open up this whole menu. This is where you can access virtually every tool within Brightspace. So in general, that's usually your starting point. And when you're in there, the best place to start, unless you have a very specific place to go where if you're creating a quiz or a discussion forum, start in Course Builder. Get there. There it goes. There we go. Okay. And what this does is it shows you the structure of your course. This is a course that's actually underway. So we're not going to actually work with the existing content, particularly not those that students are working on. What we're going to do though, is we're going to create a new module, which will not be shared with students at this <laughs> in there. And what you do is you, if you hover over these things, well, let me go back a step. A good place to start in building a module is building an overall outline of the structure of your model. 
your module. So we're going to create a module here and we're going to put it right in here. It'll put it by default at the end. And this is going to be just, we'll call it demo. Okay, then you could put in a description, you could put in the image for it, and that's what would appear on the outside. And one of the things- Did you put that in a module or in the unit? In, in the, the unit. Course. Well, actually it's going to create a new module right at the bottom. Okay. There. And so if you see at the bottom, it lists, it's going to put it at the bottom unless you move it. Now we could move it and we could move it pretty much anywhere we want by just dragging it to the place we want to. And in fact, you, if you're doing this with us, just practice that. Move it up and you'll see a little line where the cursor is. That's where it's going to go if you move it. So um, we'll just put it back in the bottom again. But um, Yeah, so when, when you're selecting, you know, when you create a module and you're selecting, you know, the location you want it, you want to um, generally pick your course title um, so that it's in the same level as all of your other modules. Okay, any questions? Okay, well, once you've created a module, the next step is to put things in it. And these are the, and all we're doing right now is we're building an outline of the structure of a module. You don't have to do it this way, but it's often the most convenient way, or it's the best way to plan if you're starting from scratch. Also, if you're porting a lot of materials over from Blackboard, you already have the content, but if you create the structure like this and do this for each of your modules, you can just drag in the items that you ported over into the appropriate places. And it's a really quick and easy way of building a course with a, a consistent structure across all the modules. And so you can embed links in there. We'll go to this module and we could put a link in. And we're going to put this right now in this module in demo. And so this would be a placeholder for a link. We could type a name here. So let's just call this um, link to, well, let's just call this link. I don't know. Let's say it's link to core resource of some sort, let's say. So it's good to put a name in for what you want it to be. Um, and then we could also drag in, for example, a, um, this is just a file placeholder so we can, drag this in and we're going to put it, actually we could have just dragged it there, um, but we'll do that for the next one. Um, and this is a placeholder for, let's say, um, overview. And we're not going to actually put anything in there right now. Um, this is just a name as a reminder to you what the structure is going to look like. And then um, you can drag and drop as well uh, from yeah. that outline menu to uh, your course outline. And you could put it wherever you want. So now we're dragging a discussion over. So there's going to be a discussion in here. There should be a discussion in there. Let's try that again. Okay, we'll put the discussion right there. There we go. And this will be, um, we'll just leave it by default as discussion. And then we'll drag in here a um, Bring over. Oh, we could put in an assignment if we'd like, an assignment placeholder, uh, and we could drag in. This is showing you each of the basic categories for placeholders. We could also put in a quiz if you want. Um, and if you don't like the way the order is, you can just rearrange that however you'd like. And now we have an outline for the basic content Within of the module with nothing in it. These are just basically shells or placeholders for the actual items. Yeah, so if um, you know you have an idea of the kind of content that's going to go in each module, like an overview, you know, within every module, it's a really easy way to, you know, build your course and then go back um, and actually, you know, edit those placeholders um, in the way that uh, you intend them to be used. So it's a, uh, you know, having this course builder tool is a really easy way to get like an entire structure of your course uh, on, you know, in, in this outline. And, you know, then you can kind of go from there and adding content. Um, so, you know, if you have content already migrated over, you can still go to course builder and you can drag and drop, you know, your content, you know, into a different order or if, um, 
you know, you want to, you know, move things up a level or down a level, um, you know, into like a sub module or, you know, a, a, um, a, you know, different structure, you can certainly do that in course builder. So yeah, to answer Sandy's question a little more directly, yeah. you don't have to, this is just a way of doing it. And if you want to start from the ground up and rebuilding a course, this would be one way of doing it. Now, the order is something you have to determine based on the order in which you want students to complete materials. You know, I generally structure it so that I list the first things they should do, which would be to read and interact with the text and so forth, you know, through the McGraw Hills platform in this. Then there's discussions they participate in. Then they have some formative feedback, some formative activities, followed by some summative evaluation criteria. But again, you may already have it in that structure. And let me show you what it looks like when it, if you haven't already seen this, we could go up to a module which is completely untouched from when it came in from Blackboard, other than me reformatting the discussions a little bit, because I've been building this week by week. Uh, and you know, there's a module overview, which is a Blackboard file that was already there. Then there's a medic, well, I have two content discussions each week. Those are there, there's some basic readings there. And then these came over as subfolders, which you can either leave like that, or if you don't wanna leave them as subfolders. So if you have subfolders and you wanna move it into a more linear fashion, I only had two items in here. All you do is you grab it and you move it out. And then you grab this one and you move it out and then it's gone. Um, and then you notice it's now in the same order. It's a linear fashion. Whether you use what's the subfolders that we had before are now called submodules. In general, Brightspace encourages a more, or most people using Brightspace encourage a more linear order. So because when students see the menu, if they see an expandable folder, they may not always expand it and they may miss content that's currently in a subfolder. So in general, it's recommended you move those things out. And if you have a lot of items in there, that accordion menu, which we we showed, but we didn't actually, you Explain didn't actually hear us talking time. about it, is a good way of replacing subfolders by using that accordion display. Um, and we can take a look at that in just yeah, a moment. So that I think addresses the second part of your question, Sandy, that uh, you know it is encouraged not to have the nesting of submodules just so that students are aware of you know every piece of um their uh course in uh the module and to kind of create that more linear fashion so when you do when it is ported over from blackboard if you have you know the that nesting in there just as john just showed you can drag it out of that um and then you can also you know remove i, I think what was it mini lectures was the folder yeah. that you you know you could remove that um you know mini lectures um folder that it was housed in because now you've taken all that content out of it. And we, and most people had some type of a course overview or start here type module on the left mm -hmm. menu. That's now generally recommended that that be the first module in the course. And then students complete that before they go on to the second one and so forth. Mm -hmm. um, now to actually add content if you have the structure, even if you don't, you could directly drag items over. You don't have to have placeholders for them, um, or you could just create them. And then, well, there's many ways of doing things in Brightspace. So now let's say we want to actually add a file. So we want to, um, these are the placeholders on top. Here's the actual content. And let's go down to the overview. Um, I'm sorry, to the, um, where do they go? Um, so let's say I want to drag something to, oh, the, this was the overview. Let's suppose there's a, um, we want to create something from scratch. So I'm going to take the, um, this was, that's close. That's not a, yeah, I didn't, this one. Uh, we're going to drag this, this is a file, the file template here. And let's say this is the overview. We probably wouldn't want that last, but we can move it later. Yeah. Um, so this will be the file name. One thing you should do when you name files, because this is essentially an HTML file, change the name because in when you were using folders and subfolders and black and blackboard, what often happened is we'd use the same name for things like an overview document. 
because what will happen is you'll see overview and then overview and then in parentheses one, two, and three. Change it to overview module or overview of the topic just so it's easier to find the file because otherwise you'll see a whole series of overview documents with in parentheses the, the version of that file and it's a lot easier when you see the name and so forth. Um, and the, you leave the default information there. Uh, let's call this overview demo just for now. Uh, so we'll know <laughs> what it, it wasn't anything here. And we just get the same type of editor you see in pretty much any web-based platform. Um, so we can put it in, oops, I didn't mean to type in that box. Um, just put something in here and go, um, There. And you know, it's a pretty standard editor. Um, you can make it bigger or smaller and you've got the usual types of tools here. Um, so by default, they recommend Lato as a font and that's what all the, the sample format or the sample um, templates. templates use. And they recommend actually 19. One thing that's a little bit awkward is many of these things don't structure, don't default to that to maintain a consistent look and feel, it's best to use on all of your documents, Lato 19. Um, it's a nice big font and it works well on mobile devices, making things much more responsive and so forth. So- um, and, and we'll show you those different templates, um, you know, for the file, creating files um, here in a little bit. And those do have the defaulted, um, you know, font and font size. So we'll, we can put in beginning and ending dates for availability, or you can just do that and have it inherited from the, the module that it's in. So let's say we now want to edit the, this document. So we're going to go here and we're going to click. So now we've created the overview document and we may want to edit it. We do the editing in the content menu. Okay, so we're going to go to content now and we're going to go down to demo here. And when we go down to demo, we see, there we go. We see this one document because everything else is just a template. Um, so we're going, to, we're going to click on that Chevron and well, or just click on it. Um, you, we could have chosen edit HTML or we could do this. And, and you can go ahead and um, click you know, edit HTML, um, and you should have the options to pick out different document templates. And so if you click on that drop down menu, select a document template, you know, depending on, you know, what, um, you know, your needs are for this, um, I, I kind of follow basically exactly what they have on here. So if I'm doing a course or a module overview, I pick either the intro or the module intro, um, and it really just sets up um, a really consistent file structure across all of your modules. So, you know, you can go through and, um, you know, see all of the different um, options there. So if, um, you know, John, do you want to just show what a module intro looks like? And then... Um, One thing to be careful with is do not do this with a document that you've already created content in unless you've copied that that material into either your buffer or into another file or a notepad or something. Um, so, because it will wipe out what's there. So I'd recommend doing this either immediately mm -hmm. or doing it on, or copying your material first. Um, yeah, so especially if you have um, information that's ported over from um, Blackboard, if you're not building it from scratch, if you were to go add this template, it will remove that information. So, um, you know, this, um, you know, module overview gives you, you know, a really nice um, introduction section. It, it gives you, you know, the um, option and its best practices to talk about the learning objectives that will be achieved in that module. Um, so there's just a really nice list if you want to scroll down, um, you know, where you can uh, plop in what your learning objectives are for the module. And um, you can, you know, if you only have four, you can remove that. If you want five uh, learning um, objectives, you can copy and paste it and edit it as you, um, as you please. So, you know, on the course copy there, we did, um, Ramin did a session on doing a course copy um, in the 
first part of our spring breakout workshops. And so we can also send that link out um, to anyone who is still um, um, curious about that. And there are a few questions in chat we should probably address before moving too much further. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a question about the course copy as that was already addressed. Um, fall course courses are being migrated over from um, right now. If you're teaching fully online, mm -hmm. the rest of us either have to do it ourselves or you can request, or you can request it. Um, There's a form available. Um, a pace matching format feature. In fact, uh, there is no direct matching format feature, but if you bring in a document that is, well, there's two issues there. One is that when you change a style, it's going to wipe everything out. So there won't be anything to do. So make sure you mm -hmm. do that. But if you have it in another document or you create a new document mm -hmm. and you reformat it, you can just right click or, con or yeah, control paste. click or whatever you do if you're not using mm -hmm. a two button uh, option of the mouse and choose paste, paste using or without format, paste right? without formatting. Um, and that will work. And it'll uh, keep the default format from um, with Lado. And um, it actually, um, the D2L people had talked about this in a session during CIT. Um, CIT and yes, um, you know, all of their templates are accessible. Um, their recommended font and font size um, are accessible and um, particularly chosen. I, I think John's talked about this a little bit before, but. Um, chosen because they, um, you know, create and curate all their content to be accessible via mobile. Um, so all of all of the decisions on default text and size are so that it it's also accessible with a mobile device. Now, even though they recommend Lado 19, this is an issue that people have addressed with D2L. The default font that they put on their pages is Lado in general, but it's 15.9 font or something. Yeah. So change it immediately. And you can just block the text if you'd like, you know, just block the whole thing and change it. It'll change it for the whole document. Yeah. So, so if you're using the templates um, to type, it will be, you know, in its, you know, correct size. But if you are just creating a blank page and you are typing into that without using a, a template, um, you do need to change, um, or at least it is recommended that you change that font to be um, accessible, you know, via mobile device. And so, yeah, but use these defaults and the big numbers make things stand out. Uh, it's a good way to introduce a module. Mm -hmm. um, and you could create your own format as appropriate, yeah. you know. But and we can show you some of those other templates too. So, you know, there's, um, if you're looking for conclusion, um, you know, page, there's conclusion options to, um, again, you want to make sure that you're keeping any information that you want, um, because it does get deleted when you change from template to template. Um, so, you know, it gives you kind of a nice, um, nice place to talk about next steps. Um, I usually put in, you know, kind of a brief summary of what we've talked about, and then talk about some of the assignments that were due in that module and, um, you know, what their next, um, module will look like. Um, so, you know, one thing we, we showed you, though no one heard, uh, was the accordion um, template. And this is, you know, John had mentioned um, before, we'll say it again, um, that, you know, when you have a lot of content, a lot of text that you are um, conveying to your students in a module, instead of having, you know, separate pages for all of that information, and you end up with you know, 20 pages within a module, um, you can use accordions to kind of um, more succinctly put large, you know, batches of text in, the, in a place so that your um, students aren't totally overwhelmed by it. Um, and they provide these really nice drop down menus so they can look at each, um, each section um, in a you know really digestible way. And in fact, let's do that. One thing that Sandy had asked a, a bit before was about structure. And in general, this is a really good place to replace subfolders. 
because quite often the items that were in subfolders can be moved to an accordion, which is a much easier way for students to access it, particularly on a mobile device. The navigation is much easier when it's linear, but within the components, you have the option of expanding things from the menu. Yeah. So and let's, okay. Sandy, just to your question, um, you know, you wanted to clarify that any current text that you've been editing um, in the HTML file will, if you, you know, switch to a new template, if you don't save it elsewhere, it will remove all of that to an override with the new template. So again, if you're, you know, trying to, um, if you have a course information that was ported over from Blackboard and you're trying to put that information onto a nice template, you're going to want to create that template separate and then copy over manually your information from Blackboard. Or if you're willing to, if once you get comfortable with it, copy it using control C or command C, change the template and then just paste, paste it in it at with, the top yeah. and then move it around to the places yeah. you want. I think, the you know, they, they, they've recommended to, you know, keep like to edit and create all of your text like in a Word document or a separate document and then copying that over um, to, um, to the templates into Brightspace just so that you don't lose any information if, you know, something were to, you know, go wrong. So um, yeah, keep asking away. I'll keep my eye on the chat. And a really useful thing is if you are working from two monitors, say at home, it's really easy to keep your old Blackboard course open in one, one thing and have your Brightspace in the other. And then you can just copy and paste the text directly in case you accidentally deleted something. And if you do delete something, you can always retrieve that from the archive file from Blackboard. So you're not going to lose anything if you do make them, well, if you do lose something, it's still going to be there. And we will have access as, as instructors to Blackboard through December of this year. So even if something goes drastically wrong and you lose big chunks of something, you can open Blackboard, grab it and paste it in. So, you know, anything that you do to mess something up, is retrievable as long as you don't delete student work while the course is going. And that's a little bit more challenging. So here you can put in a title. And generally what you can do is, let's say you want a, a three item accordion. You could leave in a general area here for an overview if you'd like. And then you would just go down and block out everything that you don't want and scroll down and scroll down. Let's try this again. Uh, Okay, let's say we wanna get rid of the single accordion. Okay, it's not moving very well. So let's just keep doing it until we get rid of what we want. Well, here's what we can do. Let's start here. Let's say we want an accordion with, um, with, with four. We'll go up and get rid of everything above that. I'm so sorry to start. Now we're gonna get rid of all this stuff there. There we go. So now we have the accordion with a block of four, and then we're going to go down here and get rid of everything below that. And I have no idea why this is not scrolling better. Um, there we go, we can do it that way. Um, okay, so now we have an accordion in here with a block of four items. You put the title of this, so this would be whatever would be in that first, whatever was in your first subfolder in a module, you could just put, um, I don't know, um, block or what, content <laughs> block one or something a little more descriptive than that. And then just go in and either paste it in here or you always have the option of editing HTML. You could put in anything that using a text editor in there that you could anywhere else. And then um, let's put some sample text here and we'll call this uh, sample text. Oops. And there's always a control Z. Um, let's try that again. Uh, so we can put in some sample text and then we could put in a link if you want. You could put in images, mm -hmm. you could paste in a whole web page. Yeah, so there's, you know, in the menu um, at the top, there's, you know, the back option in case you do screw up and you, you need to, go, you know, go back a couple of um, areas. You know, there's um, math equations, there's images, links, you can embed videos in here. Um, so, you know, there's really a lot of options for you. And then when students see it, they just see the headers and then with a little greater than sign at the end, the Chevron, they could click it and then they could go in and add stuff. Uh, Kathy? 
So I don't know if you've seen this, but I've heard that um, it's almost impossible to add uh, an extra block, you know, an extra accordion. So it, no. you, you um, can do that. it's very easy to do if you're comfortable with HTML. Well, oh, yeah. yeah, yes, I understand that. Yes. So, so what I what I have heard in other um, trainings that the CPD is doing, so you don't have to do the source code, is just to add a couple extra and then delete them when you're done. Yeah, so if if you see, you know, in that original accordion file, it says start uh, copy and end copy. If you just, you know, start right there, you know, and um, you highlight that text till it says end copy, you can start copying. So for instance, um, I had, and I, and I can show this to you, I had, you know, a, a series of um, accordion files that took me to like eight or 10 accordion files. I just, you know, used those um, sort of markers where it says start copy and end copy and added, um, added until, you know, I was um, satisfied with that. So you can, you know, you can go beyond six if you like. Um, I would just, you know, kind of use those markers. If, you know, if you didn't want to go into HTML, use those markers to, you know, delete the spaces in between and, you know, make it a little more fluid. Do accordion files let you do it? Yeah. Because um, if not, you can do a course I, link to it. It would um, probably not be recommended to yeah. do that yeah. simply because you want any assignments that students have to do right in the list of activities. Okay. You don't want it hidden. Okay. Yeah. It feels like this is all very much like we're holding. Right. Yeah. It depends. I mean, if, if you have a lot of support resources, um, let me show you an example from my from my course from an earlier module. Let me go yeah. back this to is um, certainly most like, useful when you have a lot of information you're trying to right. convey. Like if you're not, textbook yeah. Sure. If you know a, a good thing, you know you could use um, the accordion. I mean, you can use it for anything, right? But um, if you wanted to put like campus policies, right, or campus resources, you could use that accordion file okay. to kind of create that, um, you know, but it's, um, you know, so you would just want to make sure that you title that accordion, you know, course policies so that, yeah. you know, students were able to kind of keep that information organized. So, for example, I have a module, uh, some video resources that are in an accordion file so that when students go here, there's videos that are linked to subtopics within the course. So if they want to, so if they've taken some of the formative assessments and they're having trouble with things, they see these are things that there's some additional resources on. They could just expand it, see all the videos and watch them. And it just makes for a much less cluttered. And this is the same type of thing I would do in my face-to-face -face classes as well in terms of providing additional resources. So it depends on what, if, if you provide a lot of information in subfolders in Blackboard, it's a nice way of organizing it more compactly. If you okay. don't, then you don't have to do that. Yeah. So you know, the, the question Allison asked was whether, you know, this had utility um, for classes that were not fully online. Um, there's a lot of different ways you can use um, accordion files. So as John had, you know, extra resources for students that he provides them. Um, online, if you wanted to put your course policies, um, you know, in kind of this nice drop down, you know, menu that's um, more easily digestible for students. That's another way you could use this. Um, so there's, there's a lot of options. And, you know, it certainly is best for when you're trying to convey a lot of information and you don't want to overwhelm students with, you know, tens or dozens of pages um, uh, within a course um, or um, you know, wanting them to just have an option um, to expand what they want to see and, um, you know, not have to sort through it on their own. And here's an example where I take the information in syllabus and I group it by various things in a menu so students could more quickly address that without scrolling through. It's, all, it's a duplicate of material in the syllabus, literally a duplicate of material in the syllabus. Yeah, we wanted to highlight this option, you know, as a template because it's not something we had available um in blackboard before and you know it it does clean up a lot of our content um in a way that's really useful for students and because it's recommended you don't use the sub modules which are essentially what we're used to as right, sub folders 
the nesting things there just makes for a more compact view if you have a lot of stuff in your class. In this class, I had about 228 documents of various types. Many of them were links to videos, support materials, et cetera. Um, many of which students won't use, but they're there to provide additional support. And you know, it's just a good way of getting a lot of information on a single screen so that students don't have to scroll through a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. Go back to that demo and look at just a couple of the other formats. Another option that if you don't like using, um, if you don't want to use the accordion, there is also the option here of doing a, um, let's go back to, to edit the HTML is how you would normally do this. Um, you also have the option of creating a tab version of it, which is very similar. And again, it would replace the, do the documents here. And what will happen is there'll be tabs going across the top rather than the side menu. So if you wanna have things organized in different tabs, it's another way of grouping a lot of information in one folder if that's more convenient or more appropriate for your content. You could add more to it and it has the same exact type of structure. It's just, instead of having the expandable menu, it's going to be across the screen. Uh, one disadvantage of that is that if you put in a lot of tabs on your, and students are using a mobile device, it may, not, it may get a little bit more cluttered. I haven't looked at it on a mobile device, but the, 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 vertical align, the vertical list is probably easier in a mobile format, especially if you have more than a few. Basic pages, there's a video lecture if you want to do that. Um, um series of elements yeah so all of these um templates were created for suny um so you know using these you know gives a lot of consistency for students across courses um it'll give them consistency if they're taking courses at other universities too so it is you know they do encourage using these templates um, but again, you don't always have to have the teapot with the coffee, you know, cup. You can you can edit things to make it more suitable for your class. Um, so you know that's that's kind of you know this is replacing you know creating an item in Blackboard. So um, when you're um, you know just trying to get information on a page, this is a you know creating a file and creating using these templates is a really good way to keep that organized. Okay, Dennis asked a question that I don't know the answer to. I think I do. Uh, the question is hiding stuff, whether if you want, if you brought some material over from Blackboard that you're not going to use in the module right away at least, will that interfere with the progress bar? I don't know if that's true in a module, but what you may want to do is you may want to put hidden stuff in a hidden module that students wouldn't have access to, and then it wouldn't even be an issue. Um, but I don't know. Um, maybe we've, we'll, maybe we've we'll, got we'll a response We'll put that on there. our list so that when we go over gradebook stuff tomorrow, we'll, we'll try to address that. Um, that question. If um, I did just, there was a question about replacing pictures, yeah. and I did just delete one. You can go in and you could see what is in the course offering files. Uh, well, actually, no, there's some other ones that I come think with. You have it. a banner images folder down. I do, but, but, well, yeah, these are ones that I, I started to create, although I didn't have them all in. Um, uh, you go to images and I do have a banner image. Um, I had just a bunch of them that actually I didn't put in the banner, banner image until last night. I'm running a little bit behind. Oh, well, here's one. Uh, this is one from a picture I just that. happened to take. Uh, oh, yeah, one more time. You just click it and it should it should just, and no. Add. And add. And Thank so, you. Yeah, uh, it will, it will um, pop up with an alternative text. Um, if you click this image is decorative, which most of these um, images in the you know top of modules are um, it, you don't have to type anything into that box. Um, so you just click images decorative, hit OK, um, and then it will add in your uh, image there. This is a picture from the town or, or the village of Micro in North Carolina. It just seemed appropriate for, for micro economics. Um, but. But you can also do a search. You can search for public domain images mm -hmm. on Unsplash, on Flickr, using the appropriate um, 
categories. And there's a, several others out there where you can find images and just crop them down. I did notice on the last page we looked at with the accordion, the banner recommended for that was 400 by 1200. Yeah. Most of the ones I've seen suggested are 200 by, by 1200. But I think there's some range in which they tend to work. It can be, you know, it, it, you don't have to necessarily stick to that. It's just much, much nicer, you know, for, um, you know, using or viewing this on a desktop or mobile device if you do. And if you have consistent sub, sub uh, consistent pages, you may want to create something that'll be consistent across your modules and just load it into those. Um, but you don't have to. You can use the default, but students are going to get really tired of seeing those default images over and over yeah. and over again. So we'll just save oh, yeah. those here. Um, so one thing I did want to show everyone before um, you know, before we leave, you know, we can upload and create another file. So you can do it here. You don't have to do it in Course Builder. Um, we'll just write demo two or demo one. We'll just save it, um, et cetera. Is that you can, uh, when you go back to your table of contents and- And add it from the file list. It. Um, taking a minute to go back. Um, let's go back to our demo module, oh gosh, go all the way at the bottom here. Okay, here's our demo module, right? Um, oops. Um, if you go into here, here it's, you show the bulk edit, so the bulk like, edit. Uh, you'd have to go to the file menu. Is so. the, okay. Contents. I'm getting some chat. Here. Okay, hold on. We've got a couple questions in the chat. Oh, how do you create exams? We're actually going to do a session on that tomorrow on creating assignments and quizzes and other assessment. And one general note is the way you create anything pretty much to get started is from, if you would, let's go back to that menu, um, mm -hmm. because I think this will be something that people make on um, the very top. Oh, the um, course builder. And go, yeah, and click on the um, course tools. Wow. Um, this there's this is what I was going to show everyone. I'm not going to click on it right now just because this is a live course and we don't want to change anything. But if you click on the bulk edit, um, this will allow you, you know, let's say you wanted to change your um, your titles, right, of all of your modules, like very quickly so that they're all consistent, right? So you could say like, you know, course information, and then you can say, you know, module 1.1 or module 1.1 and, you know, have different files associated with it. You can use a bulk edit. This also allows you to make things um, invisible or visible to students in a very quick way. So, or to delete a bunch of things, which you probably don't want to start off doing unless <laughs> right. it's intentional. Yeah. Um, so, you know, but bulk edit is a really, you know, easy way to edit all of your titles really quickly. Um, and um, you know, make things visible and um, or visible and invisible to students quickly. So, you know, course admin, course builder. Well, so this is where you put the structure. You could drag the content over directly, mm -hmm. but you often will want to do it right from the tools. You could either get them mm -hmm. from the main menu if you want to create, for example. a a test, if you scroll down, you have assignments, which are like Blackboard assignments, mm -hmm. you have quizzes, you could just drag a template over and create it from here. Um, or you can, um, let's go back to the course tools and um, course admin again. What you can do here is if you want to create, the best way to create content, discussions, quizzes, and so forth, to have all the options is to do it from this map this menu. So if you want to create a quiz, you would go here and the same is true for surveys or other things. Mm -hmm. And you would then uh, create a new quiz. And it's very similar to the creation tools in Blackboard. Mm -hmm. um, so we don't want to go into the details right. of that now, but the same thing would be true if you want to create discussions. We'll be working on that later this morning yeah. um, or for surveys or yeah. Going back uh, to the course tools. Yeah. And again, anytime you see that bulk edit tool, that gives you a way where you can manage all of your quizzes. You can make them all visible or invisible. You can change the titles so they're all consistent. So if they're, 
you know, like, you know, we said when you're bringing things over from Blackboard, it may not necessarily have um, titles that make sense. And so you might want to change them all at one point if you want to um, change the dates. And, um, you know, that's a really good tool to, instead of going in individually to every single quiz and making those edits, you can do it all at once. A good tool that we should mention, because we're not going to focus on this elsewhere, is the checklist tool. Mm -hmm. And it's really helpful. I'm building this course a week by week, and my this week opened up this morning at 12.01. Um, but basically, you can create checklists here, which are really handy for students. Let's just do a sample thing here, where you can, well, basically, if there's a list of things you want students to do, this is something where they do them, they can check them off, and it keeps track of it, and it will give them reminders about the due dates and everything else. And in general, with anything you create, any assignments or any quizzes, tests, et cetera, you want to make sure you put in the due dates or the, um, or the end dates on it so that depending on how you structure it, so that students will get that automatically added to the calendar. But what you do here is uh, you can put in a description of it. Uh, we'll, we won't need a description here. We're just going to save this. Um, and we're going, usually I have it open in a new window in view, so we'll do that. But what you do then is you create a series of categories. For example, if there's a number of things you want students to read that week, you put in a new category, and that would be, you might call it, for example, read, um, and we'll save that. And then under the read category, we will put the things that you want them to read that week. So we can check that and choose new item. And then for it could be um, chapter, five of the text, for example, or it could be an article name, or mm -hmm. it could be whatever you want them to read. And when you do this, you could put in the due date. So if you want them to read things before class, you could put in the date of that, and they'll have this on the checklist. It'll be in their calendar and so forth, mm -hmm. um, and put in the date yeah. and time, and check display in calendar. And then that will be a reminder for students to do that. And then if, let's go back to, the, we, you could put in watch videos, you you know, have them attend something. You right. could have them complete assignments. So, you know, so you could add another category, which would be complete, um, et cetera. And then when you've done that, we created this checklist. We can then go over back to that demo module. And we go down to the demo module, way down oh, at the bottom, bottom here. Yeah, there's a lot in this class um, already. Just quickly, um, Josh asked, um, you know, is there a student well, preview feature? And again, you yeah, just- Yeah, let's, let's finish this part okay. first though. So once you created it, you have to add it by clicking on within the folder, the, um, the item that you want to bring over and just choose checklist. And we want to put the sample checklist here and then students will see it in the list of activities. Okay. Okay, sorry. Um, so yeah, if you just go up to the top of the page where your name is and you select your um, select that, it'll show you an option to view as a student. So select your name and then right at that first option, it'll show view as student. Questions? I know we went through a ton. Um, you know, I'm happy to, um, you know, we're, we're both happy to show, you know, anyone um, any, you know, more demos or what, you know, our classes look like. And, you know, I'm currently building classes for summer. And so if anyone has questions about that, I'm happy to show you, you know, how that is looking. And just to show what things look like in Blackboard and how easy it is to convert it to make it look a little bit nicer. Next Sunday, I'll be finishing up the next module. And I'm just going to show you how things look like the discussions I've already done. But let's say we go to one of those little sites I had that came over directly from Blackboard. And there's a number of things you can do. Oh, I want to get to it from the content menu. Sorry. So um, let's say we want to go to, um, we'll go to the same thing. Um, let's go here. It's hidden. Students can't see this now. But if you want to format it like Brightspace, it's really easy to do. Um, okay, here we go. Um, so let's say, well, this is a little bit different, but let's, um, this was not the one I chose before, but you can go to edit HTML. You could do either control A, well, let me do that. Control A to select the whole thing. 
Um, it came over as 15.2 pixel because that's, you know, again, how these things convert. And there doesn't seem to be a way of SUNY or even Brightspace to change the defaults easily for everyone and just change it and the whole thing is done. The only thing you may wanna do is if you have some images that will now a little bit smaller, you can just make them a little bit bigger to match the size of the font. So it's all relatively the same scale. Um, and these already had alt text. So this file has just been converted so that it looks similar to everything else there. Um, and again, things import from Blackboard pretty well. Yeah. Yeah, they, um, I will say that edit HTML also gives me some anxiety. Sandy dropped that in the, in the text, but when, you, when you're doing it in Brightspace, it's very easy. It's not all the back end code that and for most people, the only time you'd have to do that is if you want to embed a YouTube video. You go to YouTube, you grab the embed code, you'd edit the HTML, and then you'd find where you want the video to be, mm -hmm. you'd paste it in, and then you click update, and it's done. Actually, there's there's also another like kind of easy um, spot for that. So if you're in edit HTML um, and you are insert, inserting stuff, right? You can enter embed code here, and then you just copy and paste whatever the embed code is right into here. And that, that way you don't have to go into that, um, you know, kind of scary looking code, at least scary for us who do not code. I take it back. Um, I, I'm used to just embedding things in HTML. Yeah, this is a this much is, easier this is way. Much user friendly for those of us who don't, uh, who don't write code. So <laughs> um, that's, that's what I've been doing for, you know, videos and, and so forth in here. So, you know, you would just, um, copy it, um, you know, next, and it'll, it'll actually, it'll, sh okay, it's not there, but it'll show you a preview of what it's going to look like. And then you can um, click, you know, submit and it will, you know, submit it. And there. in YouTube, so, you just click on share, yeah. choose embed, and then copy and paste it right in there. So and it will go right in. Did all of your YouTube videos not migrate? Do you well, the YouTube videos, they, I, I was moving them from being links within a, with links that were embedded as Blackboard mm -hmm. links. The Blackboard links come over really ugly and they put them in these little windows. So I just went back, got the original ones, added a few new ones and put them in as embed codes. But yeah, if you have embed already in there, it will generally work. Yeah. But I, I wanted to make it, I wanted to put them within the accordion structure. It was yeah. just easier to do it that way. Yeah, so you know you can you can search for videos through here. You can add a video note. So if you want to address students in a you know in a video, you can do that through directly through here. Um, there's an option to connect to your Panopto um, as well. So you can upload things from your computer. Um, so that insert stuff is a really handy tool to add different things. And we will talk about the video notes in a later session. Yes. This week. Yeah. So you know you can record and you know anyways it. There's there's a lot of um, a lot of cool um, options through there. So we want to allow the plan was just to go over the basics and then allow people time to experiment and then we'd answer questions. Uh, we ended up talking a lot. This session yep. was probably more content than we should have put in one session. But um, does anyone have any last minute questions before we end the session? I have a One of the things that I think Frank noted was it looks a lot nicer. It does. Students are really enjoying it. They like the look and feel. It's, mm -hmm. They find it really intuitive so, so far. You, you can add um, math equations. Um, so there's a question about um, inserting math equations. You can do that um, through here. I don't know how you do these things, but I know there are things that people who do math equations are somewhat familiar with. Um, the, there was a question in a D2L um, uh, session. Uh, during CIT about whether these are all accessible. They are. So, you know, if you're um, entering in, I presume um, something like this might look familiar, maybe. Um, so you can generate a, you know, I don't know. Well, that's you, just a link. This yeah. is just a link. But mm -hmm. anyways, there's um, there's a way you can type in the equations here. It'll generate a preview and you can insert it. Um, so if that's... Um, you know, but there, this option here gives you different LaTeX 
um, MathML um, chemistry equations as well. So there, there are a lot of options here. More options than we had before. Yeah. I have a question. Can you hear me? We can. Yep, we can hear you. The uh, the SUNY DLE Bright Space Fundamentals Asynchronous Modules page that appeared on my uh, yes yeah. work through them. They're Do great. Complete that. It, it is really helpful. It doesn't take too long to go through that, but it does, you know, answer a lot of questions you might have about building a course and, um, you know, running a course. And it's also very well structured as a good example of how to build a well structured bright space course. So I'd encourage everyone to take those. And also, you know, the, um, the online versions of doing too, the scaled webinars are really mm -hmm. useful if you can fit those in. Well, we should end this so we can get to the get next to the session, next which session. is scheduled to start a minute ago. So we're going to exit for just a minute so that we can get this video rendered and then we will be back. So see you in a few. We'll, we'll be back in a, about a minute.